In this video, I'm going to show you the media item defaults in Reaper. Now, as a quick review, everything we see in Reaper, all these clips, are called items or media items, whether they're audio or MIDI or even video. So to adjust the media item defaults, we'll go to our preferences. Go to options and go down here and choose preferences. Then we'll scroll down under project to media item defaults. These are the preferences we could adjust for dealing with our media items. The first option up here is going to automatically create fade in and fade outs for new items. So by default, if we record on this track, and then we zoom in really close, we can see there's a fade in on the beginning of this file. We can readjust it to make it longer, right click it to change the shape, or even drag it over to the left side to remove it completely. But by default, it's going to have this fade in on the beginning and also on the end. If we zoom in over here, we can see a fade out automatically. And again, we can readjust it like this, right click, to change the shape or remove it completely. But by default, it's going to have a fade out on newly created media items. So if we don't want that, just turn it off right here. And now if we record some audio and zoom in, there's no fade in automatically. Again, we can create one by dragging from the upper left corner, but by default, there's no fade in on newly recorded items. And the same at the end of our items. Again, we can create one by grabbing the upper right side and dragging it over. But by default, there's no fade in or fade out on newly recorded items. And besides having it on or off, we can also change the size of the fade in and fade out. By default, it's 10 milliseconds. Let's change it to 100. And now if we record some audio, we get a fade in and a fade out of 100 milliseconds long. And again, we can readjust it afterwards or remove it or change the shape. But by default, it's going to create that fade in and fade out 100 milliseconds long. And we could also adjust the default shape right here. This is the default shape now, but we could change it to linear or slow fade in or any shape we want. Let's switch it to linear. And now if we record some audio, it creates a 100 millisecond fade in with a linear shape. Again, we can change it afterwards, but by default, it looks like this. On the beginning, and also at the end. That setting also affects punching in and punching out. Let's set up a time selection auto punch right here and watch what happens if auto crossfade is turned on and it is by default. Reaper punched in right here and punched out right here, but it created a crossfade at those points based on this being turned on and the fade length over here, 100 milliseconds. Again, by default, it's only 10. So let's see that instead. And it created a crossfade on the punch in and the punch out 10 milliseconds long. But it created a crossfade because auto crossfade is turned on. Let's turn it off and do the same punch. Now, if we zoom in, notice the difference. Instead of creating a crossfade, it faded this side out and this side in. 
And that's typically not what you want, but it's still based on this setting right here, the shape and this size. But like I said, by default, auto crossfade is turned on. So punch ins and punch outs will look like this. With a crossfade already created, making our punches smoother. And we can still resize them on each side, make them bigger, hold down shift to move them and change the punch. But by default, they're going to be the length and shape based on our setting in here. This is also going to be affected if we import items. If I go to my hard drive and I import a guitar audio file, drag it in, we can see by default, if we zoom in, there's already a fade in and a fade out on the file. Now, typically, that's okay, but there are times where you wouldn't want that. Let's say I drag in a drum loop, got one here, and drop it. And now if we zoom in, we can see the kick at the beginning of the loop is now fading in. So it's going to cut off the transient of that loop. The same thing will happen with drum samples. Let's say I drag in this snare and drop it on the track. If we zoom in on the beginning of the item, we can see that the transient on the snare is being cut off or it's fading in instead. Of course, we can remove the fade, but by default, it's going to be there. So if you're importing drum loops or drum sounds, you might want to turn on this option. Do not set fade in, fade out for imported items. So this option only affects the items we drag in or import. And now if we drag in the drum loop, there's not going to be a fade in or a fade out on that sound. And the same with the snare sample. It doesn't cut off the transient at the beginning. So for importing audio, you might want to turn this option on, but it's off by default. Now this option also affects splitting items. So when it's turned on, which it is by default, and we split this item by typing S, it creates a fade out and a fade in at the split. Based on the setting, right here, our shape and our size. And if we turn it off and make the same split, it creates the split with no fade out or fade in. But we could also use this option right here, which will overlap and create a crossfade at our split. Based on the size right here, and the crossfade shape over here. This is the default 10 milliseconds. And now with this option turned on and it's off by default, if we split our item right here by typing S, it creates a crossfade instead, fading this side out and this side in. Again, we can resize it on both sides, hold down shift and move it. But if we create splits, it's going to automatically create crossfades at that point. But only if this option is on. And again, by default, it's off. So we create splits. It creates a fade out and a fade in at that split. Then right down over here, we have enable automatic fade in and fade out an auto crossfade for MIDI note velocity, which works for MIDI items. By default, it's turned off. So if we're dealing with audio, let's duplicate these items. And if we drag them over on top of each other, because auto crossfade is turned on, they're going to crossfade as we drag them over. But MIDI items don't work that way. Let's duplicate this one up here. And if we drag the MIDI items on top of each other, they don't crossfade. They just combine, at least not by default.
But we could turn this option on, and they will. Just drag this one on top of this one. And now this item crossfades into this item. Now it's important to note that MIDI items are not going to crossfade like audio items. Instead, it's based on MIDI note velocities. So the first items, MIDI notes, will fade out by the velocity of each note getting quieter. And the second item's MIDI notes will fade in by the velocity of each note getting louder, simulating a crossfade. But it won't be perfect like an audio crossfade. And it's off by default. So if you want that behavior, just turn it on over here. And it'll crossfade on MIDI items when we drag them over each other. Now, because of the length of this video, we've just gone over the fade in and fade out section of these preferences. I've made another video you can check out where we go over the looping section down here. So that's pretty much it. That's the media item defaults for fade in and fade out in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.